Here is the 12P battery block. Let's hack the top and bottom plates and we'll make a 4P 3S 9 volt battery out of it. Put this in the bottom. See how it's split there? Take out the top plate. Oops, lost a magnet. Okay, and this is going to sit, this plate is going to sit here, and this one has to sit, it's going to, the brake's here, so the brake on this one has to be on the other side. So this one goes like this. Okay, because the brake is here and these two go together like this. That's important, if you get this wrong, you'll have a short. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and put the cells in it. This will be the negative terminal of the battery. Oops, let's make this the negative terminal of the battery right down here. Okay, one, two, three, oops, three, four, okay. And then we'll make the next group a negative goes up. So I'm just alternating polarities here. Okay, now we'll take a look. This is over here, so the, the gap is right here, so this has to put the gap right over here on this side. Okay, so let's put it together, and there we are. I'm holding the plates for a second. If I got them wrong, they'd be getting really warm right about now, in which case I would just rip it apart and, and figure out where my mistake was, but nope, we got it right. Here's the negative terminal of this 9 volt battery. So we'll go ahead and put a ring terminal on it that takes power, 12 to 14 gauge. Here we have a gap. It's important that these do not touch. If they do, they will be a short. We'll put a nylon bolt between them. That'll hold them apart. Put nylon bolts in. Okay, and over here we put washers on, except for the end, because this end terminal here is going to have a positive terminal on it, because that's the positive side of the battery, this 9 volt battery. And down here at this spacer too, we're going to want to put a washer, a flat, big flat washer. Expand that. The easy way to put nuts on this is just to press it against and hold it like this. Okay, now we'll tighten. Okay, there we go. Like all battery blocks, this case is loose. It's supposed to be that way. That way when you put the next battery block to it um, using a threaded rod to go through, you can go ahead and tighten it up without disturbing the contacts with the cell. Alright, we'll go put some power through this and see how much load it will carry. All right, this is the block that holds 12 cells. I've got it configured so that there's four cells in parallel times three. So this is a 4P3S battery of about nine volts. I suspect this is gonna put out a lot of power. When we connect it, 
up to all this bank of resistors through this 10 or G watt, um, watt meter. We'll watch the amps up here and the watts down there. Remember, this is only a 9 volt battery of 12 cells. Let's try it. Well, holy guacamole, Batman. This, this guy's putting out over 80 amps at 400 and something watts. It's really putting out the power for such a small battery. Let's check the temperatures. This would be the place that got hot, that got hot right up here, the small metal plate. Yeah, it's getting pretty warm, but is it warmer than the cells? No, the cells are actually warmer than it. These are the low cells here. These are the inexpensive um, QB cells, and these are the really high-end cells. Okay, yep, that's 101. We're still drawing 60 amps, so it's fallen off a bit. But the batteries, which are crackling over here, are at 380 degrees. So the batteries, the battery blocks can, can easily carry a lot of current, even though they are heating up. When we put the, it's actually, the, they're heating up because the cells are getting hot, particularly those QB cells. Alright, time to end this experiment.